Hey everybody, I am multitasking today. It's been a very exciting week here at the Lee Kempner house. Joe and I decided to just bite the bullet and open the house for tours. We had a volunteer weekend a couple of weeks ago and they did a lot of cleanup in the house. We had a crazy morning the first day, scrambling around, getting things finished up, getting all our QR codes up, but we had a great couple of days. We learned a lot. We're not publicizing the tours yet. We just have a sign so that people can see it driving by because we want to practice and make sure we can handle credit cards and manage the house and do everything. But it's been a great learning experience. Sherry, our super volunteer, who's been helping us in the yard so much, sat with me this morning and my husband got me this great giant tent for my birthday so that we can move it around and actually have shade to work in because it is summer here and it's brutal. So we decided we would work out front and weed this whole front flower bed. We're going to be on the fall garden tour and our yard looks terrible. So, well, it looks great compared to what it did, but it's not really showcase ready for a garden tour. So. We want to clean out this whole front bed and get some flowers in here so they'll be pretty in the fall and we can see people coming up and still sell our tour tickets so two things at once so sherry just left she's done a big section over there and i'm starting here under this olive tree but i'm finding all kinds of things like old pieces of slate and nails that came off of the roof so i will save that but the rest of the trash and the weeds we're throwing away. So my goal is to get this most, well, maybe half done today, but there's something else exciting going on in the back. Ricardo, I called him last night to see when he might be able to come pour concrete and he had today free. He's been a couple of big jobs he's waiting to hear back on. So why not? I told him to come on down. So they are back there doing the concrete in the chauffeur's apartment. So let me show you what's been going on. I am here doing what my shirt says, smile, sweat, repeat, because it is phenomenally hot today. But Joe and I are here doing last minute preparations to open for tours. We're not advertising. We've just got a sign to put in the front because we want to practice. So we're hoping to catch a handful of people coming up and down Broadway. But I didn't get finished last week with all the prep that needed to be done. So my sweet husband made me some barricades to put up with some coffin tape and I'm closing off this doorway so that people don't step into the porch area where it's unsafe. I didn't go in. I don't think it's that may be good enough anyway we want it to be safe for our guests but we want them to be able to see all the construction work going on and what this house looked like so joe is putting up our signs we made uh she came up with the idea to use oh, pull that tape so loud <laughs> yes it will so Joe's over here hanging signs. She came up with the idea to use QR codes and phones, which we've seen that in other houses where they don't have those standalone kind of headsets we have for rent. Let's make a lot of noise that you have to rent. You can just use your phone and basically it takes you to an unlisted YouTube audio that she helped me do for each of the rooms. This is my friend Stephanie, and this is my birthday present, part of it. <laughs> she's come to clean. She's cleaned the whole Lucas apartment. Now she's cleaning here. Best birthday ever. Friends and cleaning. I was upstairs earlier and heard noises and looked over the rail, and there she was plugging the refrigerator in. I'm not sure how she got in there. She's six feet tall and has very long legs, but she's determined. So now we have a clean working refrigerator full of water so that our visitors can have a cool drink while they're here because it will be hot this summer. 
before you know it, it was time to put the sign out in the yard. And I have to admit, on the very first day, the sign did not look like this. We did not assemble it right. It was pretty sad. I'm surprised anybody noticed it at all. But within minutes, a car whipped over to the curb and a woman got out and came running up to the house. So excited to take a tour. She was our very first. And God bless her. She handed us a $100 bill and said she didn't want change, that she loved the house and was excited about what we were doing. And just like that, we had our very first walk-up tour. In between visitors, there was time to do little chores. I would help, but you know, I'm videoing. Sweet. Thanks for the help. <laughs> Anytime. These shutters are long and unwieldy. They're all original and probably cypress. One. <laughs> One down and three to go. These are the curved ones, right? So let's show Tell. how they're. Five. Oh, there's two. Oh. These are the curved ones that go on the alcove. Awesome. So they've always been green, but they've been different shades of green. Now I mean, there's three. We count three to go. I needed to drive the truck down so that I could bring those barricade stands that my husband made me to the house. And he suggested that since I had the truck, that I go ahead and load up the shutters that go on those curved alcove windows and bring them home. Normally, something like repairing and painting the shutters would not be high on the to-do list. Remember our order of work, surface or cosmetic things like this are at the very bottom. But in this case, I classify these particular shutters is something that needs to be done to prevent further damage to the house. The glass in those alcove windows is curved and very expensive to replace. When we get those installed, hopefully soon, and if we have a hurricane and they're unprotected, there's a risk that they could get broken. So I need for these particular shutters to get fixed and put back on the house to protect those windows. Heather knows a place in New Orleans where we can take them to get them stripped and repaired, and I don't want to drive that far by myself. I get sleepy driving, but my husband can drive for 24 hours straight, and he's volunteered to drive me to New Orleans with a little side detour on the way home to swing up to Hot Springs, Arkansas to pick up a cast iron water heater that I purchased online for the house. So I need to get these home so when we're ready to make that trip, we can just grab them and go. These things are heavy and they're long and awkward, so I have to pick them up right where they're balanced in order to be able to carry them. And to be fair, Joe did help me get the tailgate closed and get the last two shutters loaded, so we didn't have the tripod with us to capture her doing it. You'll just have to trust me. I tease her about watching me work, but I'm blessed so far with not having any back or other joint issues, and she does, so she really does have to be careful. She helps out tremendously in a lot of other ways. All right, I was a little late to the party this morning, and these guys are already getting the rebar laid out. So this is an exciting day. And they brought this. And unfortunately, it's too small of a place to bring in a big truck, so they're going to hang in the mix. Oh, Ricardo, can I show you something? Yes. 
this one we cannot get screwed into the wall um so the electrician one makes sure it didn't move so i don't know if you can get get it secured somehow um but i just want to make sure it doesn't you know float up so i don't know maybe lay some rebar over it or something to keep it down and hopefully it sticks up high enough if it doesn't let me know i'll have to run by a couple of input on it uh here's one more floor hmm? here one more stone no that's fine where it is we just don't want it to to float up yeah It was Friday morning and I had to run to the Lucas apartments to take care of some things before I headed to the league house. And by the time I got there, Ricardo and his crew were already hard at work. As always, they don't waste any time. This is so exciting. My friend, my friend is back. Yay! If you notice, they've already put down on the ground that heavy, thick plastic sheeting that we used before. Again, this is to keep the bare dirt floor from touching the bottom of the concrete. That acts as a moisture barrier to keep water from wicking up through that concrete. Just another way to try to dry this basement out. So we're getting a proper concrete floor, not what we had before with just brick laid down on bare dirt and a little bit of concrete poured on top. This is going to be a traditional reinforced four inch concrete slab so what you see them doing now is getting all the rebar in place to strengthen this concrete with the rebar down and secured then it was time to mix up the concrete and start the pour and this was brutal work for these guys the volume that we have to pour is way too small to order a big cement mixer truck full of concrete so they elected to hand mix it You supervising? <laughs> That's a lot of concrete to mix by hand. You didn't want to bring your tumbler thing? No. Too much trouble? Ricardo does have an automatic mixer that he's used before on mortar, but he said he thought this was just the easier way to go. And they're the ones having to do the work, so I can't argue but it was horrible down there they worked so hard mixing this concrete it was a very long process it was very dusty and dirty and if you notice they are wearing respirator masks i think that's because maribel is here and she makes them do things that i can't make them do but again they work super hard all day and the results were fantastic. I should note that this is not Ricardo's regular crew. If you notice, there's a couple of new guys here today. And these are actually friends of Ricardo's who do nothing but concrete work. Ricardo doesn't do that type of finished concrete work himself. So he brought them in. They have all the tools and the knowledge to do this. And Ricardo helped provide some of the labor. When they finished the pour, it looked great to me, but they weren't quite done. They wanted to let it cure for a little bit and then come back and do some final trial work. So everybody took a much, much deserved lunch break. It was very late. It was about 1.30, quarter to 2, and they always break for lunch at noon, but they wanted to get the concrete in and be able to let it sit. So they took a break, and I went back to work in the front, but then right after the lunch break, Ricardo came around wanting more work to do. The two expert concrete guys were going to do the troweling, and he wanted something else to do. I can never get him to just sit and rest. He's insistent that he work until exactly 4.30 or 5 in the afternoon. So I had to come up with something on the fly, and since we were working to try to get the yard in good shape, I thought of our little planter under the portica shea. It was in pretty sad shape. I have that one really cool picture of Daisy League standing by it. It's original to the house, 
But when they raised the island, most of it was covered up with fill dirt. And somebody had added some extra rows of some kind of crumbly shale rock on top to raise it. And it was just horrible looking. So I had him take that rock off and find some pretty rocks that looked like what was originally there. This is all things we've picked up from the yard. I have a big pile of them. So he went through and fished out the ones that were the right size and started rebuilding the planter for me. Ricardo is so incredibly precise about his work. I would have just put the rocks up there, but he got out his fancy new zip line level. It's really just a high precision altimeter. And he bought it, bless his heart, to help with pouring the floor. He's very good about reinvesting in new tools to help grow his business. And this is just a really handy thing to have. My previous contractor, Robert, had one. It's what we used to lay out all the preliminary design for the grading that went on in the yard. And Ricardo got one to help with pouring the floor. So while he had it out, I decided to use it to double check the measurements that David did for me with that laser level on the side of the house where we need to put in a drain. Okay, is this yours? Mm-hmm. See. Is that brand new? Mm-hmm. When did you buy it? Three months of working. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. Mm-hmm. We have so many things I want to measure. Yeah. Yeah. You can take it. Well. No, I don't want to keep it. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> But I do want to play with it. Next mm -hmm. time you come back, mm -hmm. the plumber measured from here to the street for me to see if we could get a pipe. Mm -hmm. But this is more accurate. Yep. To see. Mm -hmm. And they said, Can we do it real quick? Yep. Can we do it real quick? Mm -hmm. Do you know how to do it? No. no. <laughs> You don't know how to use this new toy? No. I'll wait for him. <laughs> I don't want to break it. Yeah, I want one of those so bad. He wants to show you how to... Okay, he's going to show me how to do it and then I can play with it. Then we can play with it. So you put it down, uh -huh. you go to zero. It's on. It's on, and you want to take a... Right, right here. Okay. <laughs> and then you zero it. Mm -hmm. And then wherever I put it, it'll show me up or down in okay. inches, feet and inches. Okay. So I can drag that all the way out to the street. Two inches, two inches one quarter, okay. two and three quarter, three. Ricardo got back to work and I took the zip level and drug it all over the yard and mapped out a lot more of the elevation and tried to figure out what else we could do to tweak to improve the drainage just a little bit more. We're almost there near the house, but there are a couple of small things we might do to improve on. But it is so much easier to figure that out when you can measure accurately the elevation to the quarter of an inch. This thing is fast and easy, and I'm thrilled to know that Ricardo has one. I'm sure I'll be borrowing this a lot in the future. Enough playing around and supervising, I had to get back to my own work. And then I'm going to get back to weeding. Unfortunately, I can weed because I had a violent storm come through last night. Houston got a deluge of rain, 200,000 people without power transformers blown up all over the city apartments burned down from it um, anyway it was really bad galveston 
got a little wind and some rain and actually it's the perfect amount of moisture in the ground to dig today. So it's another reason to get this task done today. I'm amazed by this dirt down here. Where I live up in Houston, we have gumbo, which is a black, thick clay. And there's no way you can dig in it. It's When it dries, it's like concrete. When it's wet, it's just like sticky and gross. And down here, you can just, you know, dig like they have on TV when they dig. And dirt is loose and nice. So it's actually kind of a pleasure to be able to do a little bit of yard work down here. I normally don't like it because it's just so hard to do in my own house where I live. But look at that beautiful, beautiful topsoil. So I think if we can get some real plants in here, they can really take off. But we'll have to get something very hardy that can handle the heat. So we are thinking Vinca. They bloom incredibly well down here they grow like a weed and the hotter and the drier the better they like it they can actually get a fungus in their roots so Houston's a little wet for them but down here they're really striking so I think that's what we're going to go for in here and Sherry actually came up with a great suggestion she said to weed about three foot section across the front first get that cleaned up we can plant our vinca and then weed behind it because they do take a little while to get established that way we don't have to wait and do the whole bed before we get something in the ground so i'm trying to do around this olive tree and then just along the front to follow her suggestion because i thought it was a great one i call her the boss of the yard she's got the green thumb Me, not so much. The planter was well underway and I was tired of weeding in the front, so I decided to go back into the chauffeur's quarters and check on how the concrete finishing was progressing. These guys were being extremely meticulous and careful. I had let them know at the beginning that we're not going to tile this floor, we're just going to stain the concrete. So concrete finishing they're doing will be the final surface of the floor so it's important to get it done nicely I mean it will be concrete floors but we still want it to be smooth and be pretty when it's stained and they took me at my word and I thought they did just a beautiful job they did fill in those very deep channels that I call the possum highway and they wanted to let that cure for a few days before they put the final surface over the big part of the room so they will be back on Monday they have a lot more concrete mixing to do as you can see from these bags but we're very very excited to get this part finished it's going to make a huge difference in the work we can do down here in the basement so that's it for this week. It was very busy. We started tours. We got a floor in the bathroom. We're getting an unexpected bonus of having this planter fixed and some yard work done. There's always something going on here. We really appreciate your support here on YouTube. We're so excited to be open for tours. Hopefully we can meet some of you guys in person soon if you head to Galveston to see this house. But be sure and check on the website or on Facebook or give us a call to make sure that we're open before you come. Our hours aren't steady yet. The last thing we want is to have somebody make a trip down here expecting to see the house and it not be open. So hopefully we will get standard operating hours soon and that won't be a problem. So until then, thanks for watching and supporting us for the Lee Kintner House, a nonprofit here in Galveston dedicated to restoring and preserving this amazing house.